Right, so we're on to the big one, the Senior Football Championship, and it's sponsored by Shane Murta Precast. Before we dive into the groups, a word on the star stud managers you have here in West Mead. So you've John O'Mahony over the Downs, Lee McHale with Atlone, Frankie Dolan steers Rosemount, and a man that gave us a great interview down in Dingle at the Body of Shea tournament, Ned Moore over Mullingar. And the reigning champions, Gary Castle, have the mighty Gary Dolan and John Keane. Have I left anyone out there, Gerry? Um... Probably not, but I mean, you certainly, the star studded is the correct term there, absolutely, yeah. yeah. Frankie Dolan, Rosemont. Men, men, you mentioned him, didn't you? Yeah. Oh, sorry. Yeah. yeah. yeah oh, I thought that was a big shocker or something. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. 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 I said him. I, I, I think the, it's not even a manager, he's assistant manager in Shamrockson, and, and I know him well, and I, I've seen him at a couple of practice games that we've had so far, I'd be a Shamrock's manager, and they have Laz Malloy on the sideline, and if you think Ned Moore is a little bit off the rails, where did you see Laz get going? He said he's a different kettle of fish altogether. He's a, he's a, a serious outfit with, with the Shamrocks as well. The band famous for being dragged out of the stand. Dragged out of the stand, yeah. Remember that? Yeah. Yeah. Chapter right. Action, Croke Park. Croke Park. Those were the days. And you've Mayo and Liam McHale in there too? Yeah. And Liam, I think Liam was with Nace last year. He's down at Athlone this year. But he lives quite close to Athlone, so... Um, we're, we've no shortage of good managers. Yeah. I can tell you that much from that. Definitely. So we'll get on with it anyway. We'll look at the groups in more detail. So group one is at loan. Gary Castle are last year's champions and the newly promoted Calgary. With the box office first game is at loan and Gary Castle. Put a popcorn out for this one. <laughs> uh, the, the difference between these two sides over the last 15 years has been Desi. Uh, obviously there's going to be no Desi this year after his retirement. Um, it's going to be an awful lot closer than people think. I would say that Gary Castle will probably just shade it. Um, well, they're a good outfit. And they're, they're, they'll be better now that Ray Canellan is back as well. He'll add a bit of impetus with them. But um, I expect Gary Castle and Atlanta to come out with this group. Um, and with um, Desi gone, who will replace him? There's no replacement. There's no replacement. No replacement. But who, he'll he is, fill in for him. He's, he's, this lad's just, he was just a genius. Yeah. You know, he's uh, there's no replacing him down there, um. But still, the the good outfit, like he went off in the county final last year at half time. They were nine points down, and they came back and won. So they can play without him. Yeah. Uh, so it's a great championship. I think at and Gary Castle come out with Group One, but it'll be it'll be a tough it'll be a tough group as well. And Jerry Cowery, they're a young team. They still do something. Um, they're a young team and I suppose, I, I would imagine their target is to consolidate their place at senior level. Uh, I would expect Gary Castle and Athlone to get out of that group. I mean, I know we rave about Desi and Westmead, but with every justification. But he wasn't just his ability as a player, he was an on-field leader as well for them. And uh, it would be a huge loss, even at 40 years of age. But they have some good players coming through as well. But that, that first match, Gary Castle and Athlone, it's not a gimme by any, by any means for Gary Castle and Athlone. Yeah. have the Canellans and lots of other good footballers. But uh, it's not a gimme. Uh, a local derby, a long, a long and probably unpleasant history between those, those two clubs. Um, and uh, Athlone will give it everything in that first match. It's not a gimme. It, it, there's a possibility of a shock there. I would the famous free twenty euro bet that Paul and I talk about. I'd still go for Gary Castle, but I wouldn't rule out a shot in that match. And Paul, if you had a top two, I'd have to go for Gary Castle and Athlone again. I think the Ray Canella factor for Athlone is, is a major plus for them. Mm -hmm. I, I I just thought the lack the lack that leader last year for for the vast majority of the games, and he, he brought a different perspective and he did come into the side. He he's a super player. He really is a super player. I'm not so sure that Desi is a big loss, as people say, for Gary Castle, particularly in the last what? number of years. My God, I, I that's know a big statement. No, but I know he's a brilliant player and everything like that, but an awful lot of other players have come on in the time that Desi has been, shall we say, getting older. You know what I mean? He's still a great player, and he's still the fulcrum of an awful lot of their attacks. But the Alex Gardner, like, he's a really, really decent player. Jack Dunham at the back, John Gaffrey. Like, these guys are seasoned players. They've played in... A lot of these guys have played in all their learning club final, you know, against Cross McLean and took them to a replay. Now, I know mm -hmm. Desi was the driving force behind it. These, these guys are serious. Look, at no one on the other hand as well, they have some serious players as well. Like, Nellan is a decent player. We've got a couple of young lads coming through. I think they were a little bit <laughs> raw last year. I, I hope that the 12 months in between 
has brought them on that little bit. I'm not thoroughly convinced. I think Connery might still have a say in this. They're young, but they play a lovely brand of football. They really, really play a lovely brand of football, in my opinion. I thought their, their first 20 minutes in the county intermediate final last year was as good a display as I've seen from any team mm -hmm. at, at any stage of any championship last year. <coughs> Exceptional against Spiltown Pass. Like the game was over in honesty after 20 minutes because they absolutely blitzed them. It's whether they come up to that level. I, I think it might be a year or two too early yeah, for them. Yeah, first year. I think it might be a year or too early for them. I would go for Gary Castle on that low one. And I think Gary Castle will top the group. He's all agree at low on Gary Castle? Yeah, I would just one point to make, and Paul's point about the young players. I think the reason they have come on so much is to have Desi around them. To, mm -hmm. to educate yeah, them. I, I, I Des, I Desi was always the opt-out ball. And that option is gone. Mm -hmm. If you're struggling in the corner, look for Desi. And he'll take it over from there. So it, I think it was the know. strings he pulled. Like I mean, yeah. if if he came on for twenty minutes, he was direct and clear. He was direct and clear. Like I mean, he brings them on he's there. telling that's where to go, and guys go there. Yeah. you yeah. know what I mean. He yeah. has that kind of thing He'll about him. Probably it. turn James Dolan into that type of player. I would say he's like James Dolan is a serious player. I would, I would say Gardner might even turn into that stuff. Well, I just think that James Dolan play anywhere from. From five to fifteen. Mm. I agree. Like I remember, he played in the county final a few years ago. Did he score one two or one yeah, three in it? Yeah. He played full forward. He could turn in. He could be the new centre forward for them to play like Desi used to do. So it's a, it's a good outfit. Very good. Brilliant. So we'll move on to group two then. We've the Downs, Rosemount, and Castle Daly. Um, Castle Daly it's Rosemount facing Castle Daly in match one. So what do you reckon here? How did this group, Jerry? Uh, I have a soft spot for the Downs. I, I, I helped them out there with their club history a few years back and old enough to remember the great Downs team of the, the late 60s and early 70s and a uh, soft spot for them and I've been kind of hoping in recent years that uh, they might make a breakthrough and uh, they still have John O'Mahony in charge. I mean, you've, you've, you've rhymed off a lot of names there, mm. but in terms of the man with the most silverware, John O'Mahony is head and shoulders above any other manager there. I mean, he's, he's managed three teams with enormous success and the fact that he's still there shows he must see some potential. Uh, I think the two teams in Black and Amber, the Downs and Rosemount, will come out of that group. I, I have a feeling Castle Daly might struggle a little bit this year and uh, not just convinced the Downs maybe are good enough just yet to actually win the Flanagan Cup, but they're getting closer every year and I expect those two teams, the Downs and Rosemount, to come out of that group. What do you reckon about it? Yeah, I would agree completely with Jerry. I think the Downs are the up and coming team at senior level. They have uh, they've had massive success underage, uh, maybe not in the last year or two, but before that they probably went three or four years yeah. winning a lot of championships. Um, they have Luke Lockley there, who's he's as good a forward as Lewis and West Mead. He's, he's just massive pace, two great feet. He's a great player. Uh, Rosemount, I feel. They won't, I don't think Rosen will top the group, but I think they'll come second to the Downs. I think, unfortunately, for, for Castle Daly, um, they're still relying on a lot of the older lads like the Kellys and like Derek, Derek Keeble is still playing with them and stuff like that. I think, numbers wise, they mightn't have as, as many numbers as other clubs. I think they may struggle in this group, uh, even though I don't think they'll, they'll go down. I still think they may struggle in this group. I think the Downs and Rosen will come. And if you give us just two names, Paul? Oh, Rosemont and the Downs. There's no, no question in my Brilliant. mind. I think Castle Hill will seriously suffer in that group. I expect the Downs to top the group as well. So, Group 3 then, we've St. Longland, Mullingar, Tyrrell Pass and Shandona. So, on paper, Paul, it looks like it could be an easy one for St. Longlands, but Tyrrell's Pass will probably be no pushover either. No, and... I know... The, Rumours have it that Lomas have recruited during, during the lockdown and had recruited prior to the lockdown. Where would they be recruiting from? From a lot of places as far as I know. There's a couple of players have transferred into them. Um, I think Terrence Pass, a lot will depend on, on Jerry Egan and, and if Jamie can do this fit, I'm not even sure whether he's fit. But they're Jerry's yeah, fit they're as well. Fit, they're, they're both fit. I, I think Terrence Pass will, 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 will more than fancy their chances against Lomas. They've always been kind of a bogey team at St. Lomas. They've, they've beaten them a couple of times in, in, in the group stages over the last number of years. And they'll fancy their chances. I do see Shandona struggling with this. I know a couple of the Shandona lads live out beside me. And uh, they're struggling for numbers at the moment because an awful lot of guys haven't come back to them. But they have Tom Malloy back this year who wasn't with them last year. He would make a serious difference though. He's a really, really decent forward in my opinion. And I, I don't think this group is as clear-cut as it was, but I do see 
like it's, it's all the teams in blue, and it's funny enough, and Terrence Bass and Genoa have virtually the same colours. Uh, Lomas would be the, the darker blues. Um, I, I think Lomas will come out of it, and I think Terrence Pass would possibly come out of it as well. But I wouldn't completely rule Shandon out. Uh, just not at the moment, I wouldn't rule them completely out. Jerry, do you reckon that Shandon will struggle? Uh, well, I, I'm not sure that it's struggle, but I, I think it will be Lomans and Gerald's Pass. I mean, mm. Alan referred to Kieran Martin and Callum McCormick there, their influence on, on Maryland. Like, the influence Jerry Egan has on Gerald's Pass is enormous. Now, I'm not sure, I mean, he, he, he's, he might be struggling a little bit for match fitness, but um, there's nobody has been a more dedicated player for Westmead over the years than Gerald, and a huge, huge fan of his. If he's backfiring on all cylinders, Turles Pass will uh, could push the best of teams in it. Shandona may struggle a little bit from the famous second season syndrome. They got promoted the previous year, first time ever in the senior championship, and did very, very well, more than held their own. Now it'll be very interesting to see how to do a second time round. Um, new manager as well. New manager. Um, so uh, I still think that the, the, the big two there will be Lomans and Turles Pass. I think Shandona will probably just be happy again if they can consolidate their place mm -hmm. at, at, at senior level um, I don't see the shock in that group What do you think of mate? I think um, I think the probably the, the most unluckiest team in the championship the way the draw has been done and the, the, the change in the in the setup has been Shandona I actually sort of half fancied them to come out with a group that they were in before this then they got thrown into the to two of the best teams in the championship yeah, Romans, very so. Romans our, our Lomans after winning three of the last five championships um, and then Turks Pass have been in three of the last five county finals you know so they've been, been thrown into a, big, a, a very tough group I expect Lomans to come out on top and I think Turks Pass will come second like Turks Pass will have Jerry Egan and Jamie Ganu back who were who they were missing last year uh, the year before they were in the semi-final the two years previous that they were in two county finals I think two boys will make a serious uh, addition to them, obviously. But then you have Dennis Glennon, David Glennon, you have Connor Seven, you have lads like that that are very good, very excellent footballers. Like there's, there's no, like Dennis Glennon is the, is the Desi Dolan of that club for the last 15 years now. And, and Gerard now is there to help him out in that regard in terms of scores. But I think them two teams have definitely come out of the group and it's just very unfortunate. Very unfortunate, yeah. So we'll say Terrell's pass and St. Dolan's coming out. Yeah, I, I don't see any other way, to be honest with you. I, I'd love to say St. would be in the shake-up. And if I, was to call, if I was to say that there might be a surprise in any one of the groups, I think that might be a surprise, but it, it'll be tough for them. It's tough. Yeah. Tough. So we'll move on to group four. It looks like maybe the weakest group. It's Mullingar, Shamrocks, Coralstown, Kinnegad and Kilcoke, sorry. So Mullingar versus Kinnegad in game one. How do you see this one going down, Jerry? I see Shamrocks winning it. Um, is it the weakest group? Perhaps, I don't know. Um, there's no real weak group in it. I mean, Kalukin over the years, I mean, you know, Alan was talking about Malachies and, and the Castletown Gagan having virtually the same team. Kalukin football team is virtually the same team as the Harry Orland team, so um, it, it's kind of always been difficult for them, but, but maybe this new format might suit them, but maybe an ageing team and uh, un unlikely to get out of that group, I would say, but uh, Shamrock should be favourites for that group. I would expect them to open the campaign by beating Carlstown Kinnegad and I would expect the top two to be Shamrocks and Carlstown Kinnegad. What do you reckon, Willie? Yeah, I'm in agreement there. I just, I think, like I know Paul Bradley didn't play football last year, but he's gone now. Um, I just think that they're, they're staunch hurling up there, probably similar to ourselves in Castanham, but they'd be really staunch hurling up there. And we, Killian Doyle would have been a scorer for them as well. If he's not going to be, if he's going to be in England, not around, I can't see where the scores come from. But in fairness to Kalukin, they would have an awful lot more players that just play football now than we would. They okay. have five or six lads that'll be on the team that don't play hurling. Uh, but I just think that don't have the maybe the firepower up front to to uh, trouble the other two teams. And I think Mullingar will top the group, and I think Kinnegad, of course, and Kinnegad. Paul, your top team. Yeah, I have to agree. As a Shamrocks man, I would I would have to say I think I think even hard to rule in the head here. I think Shamrocks are possibly the best team in the group. I, I know they have Larkin Smith back from playing with St Vincent. He's back playing with them, playing very very well. I believe that Paddy Fagan back firing on all cylinders was injured last year. 
there's huge competition. I know I've been down at a couple of their um, practice games and a couple of their friendly games, and there's huge competition for places amongst amongst a lot of players. They're a little bit aging, that's unfortunate. Uh, Michael Curley is getting old, but he's still, in my opinion, he's the best defender. He's certainly one of the best defenders in the county. I think Kenny Gadden really put it up to them. Um, both have a kind of a sit behind the, the ball. It's, 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 it's almost like a defence, and they're both going to try and do that as far as I'm aware in the first game so it may not be a, a great spectator sport for, for that first game anyways. Lucan funnily enough have a, have a hex on Shamrocks, they've beaten them three out of the last four times in championship which is a very unusual a statistics. They have but they're a little bit, it's a little bit early for them I think. Okay. I think it's, it, it, the next couple of years Lucan will possibly be that a little bit stronger if they, if they can retain their senior status. I do see Shamrocks coming out of it and I think Kinnigan will just possibly have too much for Lucan on this occasion. I, I, I think they're the two teams. And Jerry, what do you reckon? If that group? Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Shamrocks and probably some huge yet come out. So now I have the hardest question for you now is we're going to pick two that will be in the final for the senior and then and you pick one that will come out on top. It's probably the hardest question of the night. It's, it's every bit as difficult as the intermediate, in my opinion. Um, I, 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 I have a feeling I haven't watched Shamrocks on a couple of occasions this year. I think there's a moment, little bit of momentum behind them. Maybe it's just rose tinted glasses because I'm a Shamrocks man. I, th I think they'll be there, thereabouts. I think Lowens are still, even though they lost the last two county finals, I still think they're the team to beat. I, I honestly do think they're the team to beat. And I think Gary Cassie, even without Desi, they'll be there, thereabouts. And I expect the Downs to be in with the shake up as well. If I'm going to pick a team, if I'm going to pick a team, I'm going to let my heart rule my head. I think Shamrocks could possibly. Regain the the Flanagan Cup this year. I, I just have a feeling. And if your head was ruling your heart. I think I think it'll be. I think it could be an all money hair final again. To be honest, I think it could be that. Right. Who wants to go next, Jerry? Uh, <laughs> I I will go with Lowman's to regain the Flanagan Cup and beating the Downs in the final. I think the Downs have been making marginal progression every year. Possibly not good enough to win it out, but I'm just going to go with Lowman's and the Downs. I'm not going to do like Paul and name them all and cover myself. <laughs> right, but over to you. I think I think Lomans will win the championship and I think they'll beat either Turtles Pass or Mulligar in the final. I just think that they probably have a little bit more firepower than all the other teams and Paddy Dowd's back, they thought he'd come miss the championship and now he's back, he's back from uh, from his trip abroad with the army. So I would say Lomans to win beat either Turks Pass or Shamrocks in the final. Brilliant, well thank you lads. So just on the intercounty very quickly, so obviously Westmead have Dublin in their first game. It's very tough to be training or to be looking ahead to train and knowing that that's what awaits you. What do you think about it? To be honest I think the most important thing for Westmead football now will be the last two league games. I agree. To make sure that we consolidate Division 2. I think it's a step too far Going in against Dublin, obviously. Uh, I can't see us beating Dublin. If we stayed within 10 or 12 points of them, I think that would be would be good enough for yeah. this year. Uh, in saying that, I think Dublin are, are going to be on a little bit of a downward spiral now. That's just my opinion. I just I don't, agree. don't think they're going to be mm. as good as they have been in the last number of years. I think the whole new manager thing is going to take a little bit of getting used to it and, and the whole preparation is obviously going to be different. Mm -hmm. I can't see what's me beating them, but I think the most important thing for us is to get at least a win in the last two league games, consolidate Division 2, stay in the proper championship for next year and take it for granted. And just with the pubs and obviously we're not sure what's going to happen at the minute, obviously the club scene is a huge thing to go into the pubs after the game or you know to your clubs or whatever, what do you think will happen there, do you think, um, is it a loss of it that you can't go in and dissect the games, Jerry? what do you think? Oh, absolutely, yeah. I think in, a, in a way, the fun has been taken out of life the last few months, you know. Um, I'm going to my first match tomorrow. It's probably be got, got on the air by the time this thing, uh, tomorrow's match is played, but I wish St. Joseph's Rochford Bridge well against NACBS. CBS. It'll be my first match since early March. I think it's going to be an eerie atmosphere, 200 in Tullamore, a ground that holds 18,000 or something. Um, lack of celebrations, lack of this, lack of that amount of paperwork and hassle. The fun has been taken out of life a little bit, really, in all mm -hmm. this. 
And let, them in. Yeah, let's hope and pray that, that I mean, the return of football and hurling or sport is not worth anyone dying or anyone getting sick, and please God, no one will. But the fun has been taken out of life the last few months, and uh, I haven't been really enjoying the soccer matches with no crowds. Yeah. I don't know how this is all going to pan out. Um, but I suppose it's better than no sport. Yeah, you know, yeah slowly but, uh, but surely, hopefully, we're getting back to some somewhat of a bit of normality, and hopefully it continues that way. Yeah, absolutely. And I mean, I don't know what Croke Park is going to be like for big games. I don't know even if the Westmead Dublin match is going to be played in Tullamore as planned, or Croke Park, or whatever. And um, just to go back to Alan's point, absolutely right. We've two All-Ireland finals against yeah. Leash and Kildare. I mean, Westmead football has to stay in Division 2. It's, it's a weird group, that Division 2. For man, it look as if they're going to go down, but the other, every other team can go up or down. Mm. It's, a, it's, it's a very hard to call, and uh, we really need to, to stay up in Division 2. Mightn't just be good enough to get to Division 1 at the moment, but I think if we were a consistent Division 2 team, you know, which would bring on the team an awful lot, I'm not going to make a fool of myself and say we're going to beat Dublin, but I will certainly think if we stay up in Division 2, it's good preparation for that Dublin match, and I certainly hope we come out of it with heads held high. Oh, of course, definitely. So there you have it. That's the Sports Talks preview of the 2020 Westmead Club Championship. I'd like to thank our sponsors, Medell Healthcare, educating your body to stay healthy. Together to support I need the future of fundraising, and finally to Clark Square here in Mullingar. Thank you to our pundits, Buddha Mangan, to Paul Doolan, and Jerry Buckley. Thanks, lads. I'm the National Riley, and this is Sports Talks.